Hey guys, this is J Sharp Tutorials, and I'm back this time bringing you a guide of how I keybind. And I know this is a very kind of controversial topic, but I wanted this guide to go about how I keybind in general so that people that are playing all different um, games can uh, learn from my style. This should hopefully help people that play Sworder, obviously, but also people that play uh, World of Warcraft or um, Elder Scrolls Online or all those other MMOs. And hopefully, this uh, new type of keybinding, not just the normal way, but this new type of keybinding and the strategies that I use should be helpful for you guys and then help improve your game because it definitely did for me. So the way I'm going to do this is just take you um, through the three different types of keybindings, but the third type is going to be my type, which I, to the best of my knowledge, create, created an entirely new way of doing it. And you guys can tell me what you think. So first, why would we want to do it? Um, so first, just what is keybinding? Keybinding is setting up um, certain in-game abilities and programming those buttons to be either on your mice or your keyboards. And basically, this is just faster, less prone to error because I can. Um, it's more accurate to press a button versus trying to click on the icons in your screen because your icons are very small right next to each other and the keys should be a little bit um, easier. And I think it's easier to understand because when you keybind my way, you associate certain types of moves with certain types of um, keys versus clicking is always the same motion every single time, just you're clicking different points on the screen. So um, for those of you that keybind partially, good for you. But um, And if you don't keybind at all, that doesn't make you a bad player, but you definitely have a lot more room to improve, in my opinion. All right, so tools for keybinding, obviously, um, you can just use a regular keyboard and a mouse up like on this top row right here. Um, nothing really special about this. Most um, computers have them. You can also um, supplement this setup with a, a gamepad, and there's a bunch of different gamepads you can use. Um, and you would use all three of these things in conjunction with each other. And you can also get a mouse that has a lot of different side buttons. And basically, these are the extremes. You can do any anywhere in between. Um, my way is pretty middle of the road, but it's pretty good. All right, the basics. So um, this is a little bit less about keybinding versus playing the game in general, but you want to make sure that you're mouse turning instead of keyboard turning. And what this means is that for most um, MMOs, you move with the WASD keys, uh, W forward, S back, and then A and D turn side to side. But it is actually much slower to turn side to side with the A and D keys. Instead, you should turn with your mouse when possible. Um, and this frees up. Uh, your A and D keys, obviously, but it also is just quicker for swiveling around, clicking on things, looking around you, and it's just more efficient. Trust me, it might seem a little bit weird, but it's well worth learning. Second thing is no backpedaling. And again, this also um, is a way to free up another key. And I know for Sword and WoW, Star Wars The Old Republic, and World of Warcraft, um, it is actually less um, fast, it's slower to um, backpedal. And so that basically means that you just want to be strafing. And strafing is usually set up on the Q and E keys, but essentially is what, what you're saying is that you don't want to be moving backward. It's slower. It's more efficient to look over your shoulder instead, which I'll go over a little bit more later. And obviously, when you keybind, it's better to get almost everything you can keybound. It is um, not as good to have some things bound and some things clicked. And although it might be um, a good thing when you're starting to learn how to keybind to uh, keybind some of your abilities and then gradually build and build and build and when you're building have some that you click but at the end of the day you want to have all of your um, abilities keybound in some way. All right so the first type of keybinding and again I said there's three ways the third way is my way the first way is just conventional keybinding I got this um, picture from an MMO website and basically what it's talking about is that you still move with the WASD keys. Most people agree, like me, that you want to be turning with your mouse. And so A and D are just strafing. But again, all of your movement is centered around the WASD keys. And your abilities, instead of clicking on them, they're clustered around your movement keys. And so, again, all these abilities, the idea behind this is that the closer to your WASD keys, the more you use the abilities. But... A lot of people, including myself, found this awkward. And um, also some uh, some conventional keybinding strategies have you have some side buttons as well, anywhere from none 
to two or three to maybe the whole uh, 12 uh, mouse buttons. But again, this is an option for you to do. This doesn't work for me. There's a lot of different uh, people talking about their way to do this, and so you should be able to find a way to keybind this way if you want. But I don't think this is the best for me. It just doesn't feel right for my hand. It's very awkward, um, and I think it's slower. And no matter how hard you try using this way, you still won't get all of the abilities of an MMO bound. It's just you have to choose your favorite ones. You can choose the ones you use mo most often. But again, as I talked about, you want to have all of your um, abilities key bound. The second way is gamepad binding. And this is getting a little bit closer to the, my way. But um, there's two main methods of gamepad binding. M method number one is you basically transfer over the WASD keys that we just saw to be right in the middle and on most um, game pads there's a little space right here I don't know if you guys can see the indents but it um tr basically you transfer over your movement keys your abilities are clustered around the same way and your thumb pad is for special abilities and this is a little bit better than I think um doing uh just a keyboard because the mouse pad is a little bit better for clicking all of the abilities around it it's still not perfect but it's better the second way which is again getting a little bit closer to my way is moving with the thumb and joystick and once you do all of your movement with this little thumb pad right here um it allows you to have every single one of these abilities to be um just abilities and uh any of these keys used for abilities and this way it's getting a lot easier to fit all of the abilities on your toolbar over there you still have a couple down here but basically once you get rid of all of your movement with the thumb pad, all of your camera movement, like turning the camera, instead of mouse turning with your mouse, instead of, sorry, instead of keyboard turning, um, turning with your mouse, mm -hmm. then you have all these abilities available to bind. And that leads us to the third way, my way, which is a hybrid, and it may seem a little confusing, but I'll break it down for you. Sharp key binding is, as um, we mentioned, having a one uh, game pad, I use a Logitech one, a keyboard and a mouse and my mouse has two side buttons and again as we talked about mouse turning is important no back pedaling is important using the thumb pad movement is very important but also my way specifically stresses modifiers and I think that utilizing modifiers the right way um, really breaks open key binding and makes it much easier to use so again as I talked about movement as I expressed with the arrows on this graphic right here is all on the thumb pad all of your movement going up, strafing side to side, is just with your thumb pad. Your space bar. Now that we moved the movement over here, we need some way to jump. And so I just rested my hand on here, and my pinky ended up on this key right here, which I designated the G15 key to be the space bar. If your hand's a little bit bigger and your um, um, finger rests naturally on this key, go for it. But essentially, you want to have your thumb on this movement pad. You want to have your fingers in the middle. And then you, whatever your last finger rests on, it should be your space key. And now, this is where my way is much different than everyone else's. Your modifier keys, usually found right here, the shift control alt, your modifier keys are now right in the middle. And that allows you to do a lot of cool different things, which I'll talk about. Again, a finger visual, if you t look, take a look at your left hand, your thumb is on the gamepad, your three fingers are on the three modifier keys, and then your pinky is on the space key. All right, so I talked about modifiers being important. For those of you who do not know, I'm going to explain it really quickly. For those of you who know, it'll only take a couple seconds. If you press a key, say the J key, you can keybind that to equal an ability. So when you press J, an ability is done. And this is the same thing as clicking on any said ability on your uh, toolbar. Then, if you hit the Shift key, what you do is you essentially create a whole new type of key. If you hold the shift key down and press J, that can activate an entire separate ability. The same thing goes with control. If you activate a control plus a J, any modifier plus the J, you get a whole new ability. So from J, shift and J, and holding down control and pressing and hitting J, we have three different abilities. And you can actually use these combination keys in conjunction with each other, which means you can hold down two at the same time. If you hold down the shift and control keys and hit J, you even get a fourth ability. So as you can see, just by pressing individual combination keys, you can get a lot of different uh, usage out of abilities. And you can, um, with the different combinations of the combination keys or of the different modifier keys, you can get a lot of your moves key bound. And 
This, I know it's a little bit tricky to wrap your head around, but I thought that um, relating this to playing the trumpet, for those of you guys who are familiar with this instrument, um, will really help you understand. Your shift control alt modifier keys, combination keys, are a lot like the three little um, keys or whatever you press on a trumpet. Now, when you press these down, it nothing actually happens. When you press down a modifier key, or, nothing happens. But when you press another key with it, that's when something happens. And you can use these keys in combination with each other, or not at all, just like you, as you could um, press any different combination of these things down and get different notes. You can press any combination of these down and get different abilities. And um, the understanding this type of thing, if you can understand that, great. Um, but if not, I'll explain it a little bit further in detail. So when we're talking about doing abilities, instead of pressing J like we used in this example, I center all of my um, or most of my attacking abilities around my mouse. And so I'm going to break it down my mouse for you. Obviously, as we talked about, just step one of the mouse, the left and right um, keys right here that you usually press down, you want to have your um, your uh, pointer finger and your ring finger down on those two keys with your uh, middle finger um, stretched across the scroll wheel. But basically, with, if you press down um, this key right here, you turn your camera or click on stuff, and this again turns your camera for order. You have two different ways to turn yourself. One turns just yourself, one turns um, just, or one turns just the camera and the other turns yourself and the camera. So again, we talked about don't mouse turn, turn with the uh, two keys right here. The second one is um, how is what we use in conjunction with the uh, combination keys or with the modifier keys. And as we talked about before, it just if you press the modifiers down, nothing happens. But if you do um, these two side buttons with a modifier, it does something. So you have, as I show in this graphic right here, you can press the forward mouse button. The side mouse button is the exact same right here. Forward, back, forward, back. Two side buttons. I call this one forward, this one the back side button. So forward, back. You can do these with open, which means that you have no combination key, so just pressing the side buttons. You can hold down shift You can with these forward and mouse buttons. You can hold down control. You can hold down alt. You can do shift and control, control and alt, shift and alt, shift, control, and alt, and press these two buttons. And so this is all the different combinations you can do with the modifier keys. Obviously, some are easier to press than others. Just pressing the side button is going to be, be easier than doing shift, control, and alt but understanding that you can do a lot of different combinations. Looking at this graphic right here, you can see that there's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight different ways uh, to do modifiers on the first button or the forward mouse button. There's eight to do on the back mouse button. So just with the mod uh, modifier keys and your side mouse buttons, you have 16 different abilities that you can bind. And I find that in most MMO games, you have a set rotation of usually less than 16, so this is usually sufficient. Okay, so now that we got the basics down, we can talk about a little bit more about what the other three um, ways we can use our mouse are. And for those of you who don't know, besides using the scroll wheel and scrolling up or down, all mouses have a mouse button press, and this basically acts as another um, mouse ability that you can usually use with um, your middle finger and pressing down the ball wheel uh, or scrolling the ball wheel can do two different things and this can be shown with this graphic and don't get freaked out um, there's a lot of stuff here just look at it in columns and I'll break them down individually it's a lot less complicated than it looks but I'm a very visual person and I want um, everyone to see just kind of what I'm thinking so first off just ignore this this is my logo this is the zoomed in picture of the gamepad just for reference and then we can look at these different charts all right first we already talked about this one we already talked about how the forward and back mouse button can be used with combination keys to do 16 different moves if you have more um side mouse buttons you could potentially do even more um combinations but since i find that ch cheap really common mouse mice have um two side buttons i decided to use that for my example and also just because i have a mouse that has two side buttons um, what the different coloring on this basically me means what we already talked about. It's easier to hit the, um, hit the combinations that are less complex. So basically having no combination keys or just one combination key is a lot easier. 
And so I did the graphic, the darker it is, the less you should do it. You should not, in your gameplay, if you keybind correctly and take my suggestions, you should not be really holding shift control and alt down. Um, what I uh, classify when I keybind a different class, like in Star Wars to the Old Republic, you have a lot of different classes, and so I keybound basically eight different characters with all of my uh, different style, my um, way of keybinding. And so when I keybind a new character, what I look at, look at is what is the fillers? What are the abilities that I'm constantly casting? And I do that with the easiest way, just pressing the two side buttons. Then on the um, staples, and if you don't know what a staple is, it's basically an add-on, but really an important add-on, a central add-on. So basically um, the staples is when I hold shift and either hit the, um, the forward or back side mouse buttons. And these are abilities that um, like if the fillers build up like a sort resource, the staples usually um, come after the fillers or maybe use up some of the resources that the fillers build. I'm um, talking really general, so this can be applied to all um, MMOs, but if you play Swarter, like a tracer missile, tracer missile would be a filler and a rail shot would be a staple. And then your specials, the abilities that you don't really cast that often, but when you need to cast them, it's really important to have it really simple and cast really easy. And um, again, uh, just moving on to the alts, this is, um, I see alt and I see A and AOE abilities, so basically all of my AOE abilities are usually bound on my alt, and this could be a pushback or some area of effect, attack or heal, but basically that's what I'm thinking. Holding down the first combination of two modifier keys, the shift and control right here, shift and control. Um, this is for what I call uh, niche abilities, and these are abilities that you don't really cast that often, kind of like um, specials, but um, you actually even cast them less than specials, um, but when you want them, you do want to have them on your toolbar. They're important for um, probably not every fight, but just some fights, and so you want to have them bound somewhere. This is something like a force slow or something that you may not usually use in your rotation, but you kind of want to have there. Then the same thing just going on the line. These two other ones, the rarely used abilities and the ones that you might not even use ever, but you want to have bound somewhere, then you can use that there. Obviously, in some MMOs, you might have more abilities, and so you may need to actually use up all 16 of your slots, and that, that might be fine. But for Swarter, on none of my classes, am I really getting past the control alt? It just doesn't happen. As we talked about with the wheel, when the wheel presses, you can um, do certain abilities, but since it's technically like a button, you can use it within the combination keys. First, when you um, have the wheel pressed with no combination keys, um, what I use for every single one of my characters is an interrupt. Every single character has some sort of interrupt um, in Star Wars Guild Republic that can interrupt a channeled ability or heal or any of those type of things. Every class has them. You get it pretty early on. Just by pressing that little mouse wheel down, I interrupt, and that's important to have quickly because when you see someone channeling a heal, you want if you're a DPS, you want to interrupt that right away. Then when you hold... Um, um, any combination key down, I turn this interrupt into a stun. I kind of associate stuns and interrupts in my brain because stunning someone does interrupt it just a little bit more. And just like pressing the mouse wheel down and having a modifier, the modifier is just a little bit more. And so most classes in Star Wars Republic and probably other MMOs too have a certain small stun. In. That's how I kind of classify it. It's like a four second stun maybe, doesn't break on damage. Um, there's a lot of different classes that have them, but um, basically just set on a simple shift. Then control, just kind of following the same pattern as the special stuns. Maybe not every class has them, maybe they have long cooldowns, all that type of thing, but they still want to bind your stuns, and so you have that under control. Again, keeping up this pattern, the AoE under alt, if you alt and press the wheel, that's what usually my AoE stuns or mezes, and for those of you who don't know what a mez is, it's a stun that is broken on damage, and is usually like, um, for example, uh, the Juggernaut tanks have them in Star Wars The Old Republic that freeze all of the um, a bit, uh, all the characters near them, and if they take damage, it breaks the stun. But um, then following this um, kind of niche abilities, um, if you hold Shift Control for my, all my characters, these are my in-stealth stuns. None of my characters have more than uh, four stuns. Again, for other MMOs, you can um, use more if you need, but this is my in-stealth stun, kind of like a zap, I think it's called. And... Um, just it breaks on damage, so it's kind of like a mez, but it's a very specific ability, and so it has a very specific keybind. The next thing we talked about is the using the mouse wheel and scrolling with the mouse wheel. And 
um, just with no combination keys, I use the scrolled mouse wheel to as my targeting system. And I know most people in the conventional key binds usually have tab for being a target, but I like um, keeping my fingers in their um, set position, and I like being able to target without moving my fingers from my modifier keys. And so I um, kind of associate scrolling up with being like scrolling out, scrolling enemy, like something away from me. And so when I scroll up with my mouse wheel, then that targets the nearest enemy. The opposite is also true. When I scroll down, it's like someone close to me, like a friend, and that's how I associate in my mind that scrolling the mouse wheel down targets the nearest ally. And having both of these bound, instead of just having target, having both of these bound is very, very helpful because as a healer, maybe you want to target the nearest ally to give them a quick heal, then target the nearest enemy because the, there's someone on you and you need to quickly hit them with a mouse wheel press and stun them, and then go on with your um, fillers and all of your other abilities. But just keeping all of your... Like the main way I like about my method is that you basically keep, up to this point, we're keeping our fingers entirely in their position. You have all of your middle three fingers on the shift control alt modifiers. You have your thumb on the mouse pad jumping with your pinky, and your um, thumb and fingers on your right hand are always on the mouse if you're ready. And so this targeting system right here, although it might be a little bit different, I don't know anyone else who targets this way, but targeting with the scroll wheel is very, very useful, and I suggest you guys give it a try, even if you don't take all the other suggestions that I'm given. The next thing, um, with also, as you might have noticed, we talked about our abilities, the main attacks that we're talking about, we're talking about our stuns and interrupts, but we haven't talked about defenses, and defenses are really important for MMOs. You want to be able to use them quickly. I use them... When, with the combination keys plus the mouse wheel and down. And again, I kind of form associations with my mind. Scrolling away, it's like um, scrolling away from me is like kind of shield around me. And so um, holding down the shift key with the mouse and scrolling the mouse wheel up activates my shield. And most characters have this um, kind of a basic sh um, shield, mid to long cooldown, but um, it's an important defensive. The other one, shift mouse wheel down is kind of like the heal. A lot of classes have this as well in various different forms, but um, it's basically a quick little heal. Same thing, mid to long cooldown. Uh, you want to make sure you have it easily bound though when you get in trouble. Then, um, I know this is kind of sp more specific to Star Wars The Old Republic, but I'm sure that it's for other games as well. You have something called Warzone, Stims, and Med Packs, and what the uh, it basically is is something consumable, not an ability that you can just cast now as a cooldown or whatever, but an ability that is one, consumable, and two, also has a cooldown. So you need to keep buying these from vendors of some sort. And um, But basically, since you can buy them, all of my characters have them. So I um, did it on my special, kind of keeping the same association of the special, scrolling up and down, holding down the control key, plus scrolling up and down, activates my stim and med pack. Again, kind of... Like, um, in Star Wars, the stim is like a damage reduction, so again, it's kind of like a shield, and there's the med pack's kind of like a heal, so again, keeping the same associations two different ways. Um, alts, this, uh, this, uh, is my place for the defensives, and this kind of varies by class. For example, uh, alt plus the mouse wheel up is my stealth out. For most of my classes, alt, uh, mouse wheel down is like a different cleanse that cleanses all negative effects and dots and all the different things. But again, it's that kind of place for the other defensive cooldowns that are very vital to what you're doing. Usually it's a big one. Then, as we talked about, as we go down the line, you're using these less and less. This is kind of like the extra defensive cooldown. And holding down shift and control and mouse wheel up activates something like for mercenaries in Star Wars The Old Republic. Um, it's like chaff flare. And it's um, something that may have a very specific usage, but it is still defensive, and you just may not cast it often, or it might not be that important, but you still want to have it. Again, on the shift, um, control, mouse wheel down, again, this is kind of like the niche, um, niche uh, ability. This is like your resource regen. And, for example, like I think in most MMOs, definitely in Star Wars Old Republic, you have some sort of like energy pool or overheating or something like that, and when you want to regain energy or event heat or all that type of thing, you usually have an ability to do that, and that's where I bound it here. You just hold down shift and control, scroll down the mouse wheel, and then you um, are able to keep all of your fingers in their position and still uh, vent heat. Control and alt are used for my offensive cooldowns, and this is for like my snipers that have those, like target acquired, that type of thing. Just um, 
scrolling up really quickly and then continuing on with your attacks. Um, it's I, that's why I bound it control and alt. Uh, not all classes have them, so I not all classes in at least Star Wars: The Old Republic have offensive cooldowns. So that's why it's in the uncommon bracket here. But um, when you have them, it's very important. Also, the kind of cool thing about binding them to the scroll wheel is, as you guys probably know, it's very easy if you want to just um, put your hand on the mouse to scroll up and down really quickly. And so a lot of offensive um, abilities, like the sniper ones, are activated at the same time. So just quickly scrolling, control, alt, up and down really quickly activates both of them at the same time and really sets you up for some bursts. Again, you can use more if you need, but for most of my characters, I really don't. All right, now that we um, went over all of the different ways that you can use the combination keys or modifiers with the mouse buttons, you may have noticed that throughout all of this, we're keeping our three fingers on the shift, control, and alt modifiers that we bound right in the middle. What do we do with all of the abilities around it? Well, the way I associate this is your side mouse buttons are with your attacks, your wheel presses are, or heals, I guess, if you're a healer and you're healing more than you're attacking, it's bound there, but I think you understand what I mean. When you're doing the wheel press, that means it's your interrupts and stuns, offensive and defensive cooldowns, as well as targeting around the wheel. But all of these abilities are all of those other abilities. MMOs have so many different abilities that do a lot of different things. You want to have them bound usually in fights. And so all of these keys clustered around the shift control alt perform a variety of different functions that you need for MMOs. As um, I hope you I hope you guys can see is that it goes G1, G2, G3, G4, all the way to G22 right here. And then the up dot is what I call this ability, and the down dot is what I call this one right here. And then the thumb press for the G13 keyboard, um, gamepad at least, when you press down on the thumb pad, it does something. So this looks complicated. I know. But it's basically like doing shift F if you're used to keybinding. It's not that bad once you get used to it, or just pressing F. Um, these three kind of continue this trend right here. Some of these you can do in combination with each other, and I will show that. But as you can tell, when you take one finger off the three combination keys and press another ability, that kind of limits your um, li limits the ease in which you can combine different combination keys and modifier keys with different abilities. So all of these don't have a lot of combinations. I'll go over the ones that do, but there's not a lot. All right, just going down the line quickly. You all can read, but I'm just explaining uh, for the people that need that. Out of combat heal. As you can tell, it's kind of out of the way. Just like when you're healing out of combat, you usually have the time to reach over. It's um in Star Wars: The Old Republic. It has a lot of different names, but you out of combat heal is very important. You want to have that bound somewhere, but just not quickly near your um, fingers to use in combat. Going across G2, this is a little bit closer to your set position, and this is the kind of disposable grenades that you can buy in Star Wars: The Old Republic. I don't know if they have um equivalents in other MMOs, but basically it's some disposable ability that you kind of want to save because it costs money. It's not your um, med pack and um, stim that you uh, we already bound over here, but it's some other um, bot ability that you don't want to use too often because it's expensive. I really don't use grenades often at, at all, but it's bound there when I do. Then your G3. If you think about it, our three fingers are right here, as I talked about a lot. If you just raise your um, ring finger up, you can hit this key very, very easily. And so the G3 I, I set to be my basic resource-free attack. And for those of you who play Star Wars, you know what I mean. It's like either called rapid shots or um, flurry of shots or some really, really weak ability. It's usually used to regain force or regain energy or regain some type of resource. But um, it's um, not really part of your rotation. And I don't even classify it as an attack. I classify it as kind of in between, and that's why I set it to be just a quick reach up. Then, um, right here in the G4 key, it's right in the middle. It would be where W is if you transfer over the keys, but I think of this as my tab if you want to think of it in the conventional way. But basically, this is my starting move, and all classes, in my opinion, have something that starts them off. It's either their first out of stealth ability, it's their a dot that they put on the target before they really start their rotation. It's the priming shot for the mercenaries that like debuff their armor and gets some of them ready for everything else. Yes, it's usually an attack of some sort, but I think of it more as a starting ability that all classes have. And you, when you switch targets or whatever, you usually want to do that first. And so that's why I said it here. It's just a quick, quick reach up with your middle finger, and then you're good to go. 
um, because this is so quick and easy um, to just reach your middle finger up. I do have combination keys with it. For example, um, my uh, Juggernaut, for those of you who are familiar with the class, it has a lot of different what I call starting abilities. And for example, it might have a jump, like the jump is just the tab, it's just the reach up. But also it has a push, which is another kind of, again, not really an attack, a starting ability. So what I'll do is with one finger, I'll hold down shift and then I'll reach up with the middle finger and hit tab. And that's a pretty easy um, movement to uh, do. It's like um, going forward and sideways and strafing sideways at the same time. It's really comfortable, really easy to do. Um, it should be easy for you to modify. Again, like pulling, like power Tech's pulling, they have a jump and they have a pull as well, or shadows have a pull. If you hold down the alt modifier key and then hit the starting movie, uh, move, again, it's like, I can't stress it enough. I don't really classify it as an attack. It's a starting ability. That's why I said it there. All right, enough of that. Next key, the what I classify as R, if you want to go to the regular keyboard, is something that has a speed increase. And this is something like a for speed, like a sprint, in combat sprint, either your hydraulic overrides make you move fast and kind of um, kind of keep you away from getting slowed. But basically, it's some sort of speed increase in combat that has some very specific combat utility. Um, as you might notice, it's also very easy to, um, and really close. And so sometimes what I do is I hold down my shift key and lift my... Um, a pointer finger up to hit the R key and this combination right here is usually for my kind of advanced movement like if I think of the R is like the speed increase in movement the shift R is like the advanced movement it's like the teleport that shadows and and uh, scoundrels and assassins have it's the um, uh, rocket out that the mercenaries have it's like kind of that advanced movement and um, obviously you can't do alt R because the pointer finger governs both both the alt and the um, R ability, but you can do shift R pretty easily. Um, next one on the line going across is the T, and this is like my mini cleanse. A lot of, again, it's kind of getting farther away from the middle, so I use it less. Some classes have that little mini cleanse where you can cleanse some dots or like slow effects or whatever, and that's just a quick little press. It has no combination keys because, again, it's getting farther away. It's harder to press. Um, it's, again, a very specific um, ability for those classes that have it. The Y abilities is kind of very specific. Not a lot of my classes have it at all. If I'm a DPS class, but I also ha have some healing abilities. So, again, most of my if I'm a DPS class, most of my DPS abilities will be on my attack bar right here um, with the side mouse buttons. But if I have a couple heals, I might put a heal right there. An in combat heal, not my out of combat heal. Again, not really using it often. It's not my job to heal, it's my job to DPS, but it's there when I need it. Then starting on this key right here is where I put the class buff. And for Star Wars, every class has that. You kind of need to refresh it once you die. It's way out of the way. Again, like the out of combat heal is because you usually do it when you die or running back to the fight, that type of thing. But you do really want to bind it because you want to cast it often. So um, that's why I put it right there. Going over to the G9, this is the kind of next targeting. I know I said most of the targeting was on the scroll wheel up and down, but it's another important targeting thing in MMOs is having the target next enemy or friend. And this is really important because when you're attacking and maybe your um, target just got a guard or maybe your target, um, I don't know, got saved by a healer or something and you want to switch targets for whatever reason and you don't want to take the time to find someone in the thick of fighting and click on them. What you can do is you can hit this ability right next to, with your um, ring finger right next to the shift key and target the next target. And this is again in the in the key binding of Sword or definitely and probably the other MMOs. But just going over quickly, it's again not an attack, not a heal, not a defensive. It's not a targeting thing. It's a little bit separate, but a quick press, and you can switch targets. If I'm a healer, instead of targeting the next enemy, I'll put target next friend there. And if you want, you can um, do it with a combination. If you want to hold down the alt key and um, or the control key, and uh, if you have, say, target next friend, if you're a healer on that key and you want to have target next enemy somewhere bound, you can use that key in combination. But basically, this is the target next ability. Um, tab or... For those of you who know tab, I transferred that to be my wheel. 
targeting next, not targeting near, targeting, targeting next would be on this key right here. Then quickly going, we already talked about this million times, shift, control, alt. This key right here is my what I call my quick hit ability. And most characters have some sort of ability that they want to cast really quickly, has little to no cooldown, um, or it sometimes does have a cooldown, but basically it's um, something that you're casting constantly without the fight. It's not really um, considered an attack or a main heal, but it's something important. For my, um, my tanking classes, this is where I hit my taunt. I just really go over, this is my, press my finger over here really quickly, this is my single target taunt. For my sorcerer, this is my bubble. For my uh, mercenary, you have the ability called culto shot, which charges and builds resources, and you can do it out or in combat. Again, you're just moving your finger over really quickly, pressing it. You don't have to, um, I like it here because um, you don't have to move your fingers off like the WSD keys because your WASD are bound here. This is just a quick um, ability. I call it my quick hit. My slow hit is one more over, and this is something a little bit more out of the reach, but still hittable. Um, and this might be my AoE heal that has a much longer cooldown. It could be a bigger heal for my DPS class, like these three abilities might be a, a heal for them. Um, and so, uh, or, um, actually I didn't talk about this in the last one. This could also, my quick hit could also be my cover ability for like snipers that go into cover. And then this would be like roll into cover. Both cover abilities have different uses, but not right next to each other. It's very easy to press over quickly. Then going to the other side, we already talked about, this is my jump. And then this is what I call the Z, X, and C. I probably should have put those right there. I'll do that in a second, but, um, it's my Z, X, and C. For my Z, I use that as my target myself, and obviously, you guys might know it's very important to, as a healer to target yourself because if you're healing somebody else and you want to click and switch healing to yourself, you want to have an ability there. For my DPS and tanks, it's really not that um, useful, but I still think targeting yourself is important to bind, and you just drop your finger down from the sh um, shift key and you can hit it quickly. Your X key, um, which I bound right here, I use from freedom from stuns. And like basically your stun breaker, and it usually ha in Star Wars every class has it. Um, for your uh, other MMOs, you might have it um, as well. But basically, it's a very important if you want to break a stun so you don't get um, hit as a healer, and you want to be able to just drop your finger really quickly, break your stun, and be ready to continue. Your next one, your C ability, going across the keyboard. Um, this is what I call a special, and there's really no other way I can describe this. Every class has some sort of weird, distinct ability that is only um, only they have it. Like, for example, my stealth classes. When I go into stealth, that's where I have C. I want to be able to press it quickly. Um, for my mercenaries, it's my supercharge. It's like the special ability for them. Um, basically, um, oh, for my um, power tech, it's my shoulder cannons. Uh, so basically, it's I'm casting that... And when I want to cast, I want to cast it quickly, especially for shoulder cannons, which is actually in the fight. And so um, when I do that, I want to have it close to my shift control alt keys. Just reaching down your finger and pressing that uh, is very important. But also, I found it's pretty easy to do use in combination with shift. And most classes, when they have one special ability, they might have two. And then for my, um, for a lot of my classes, there's some raid utility buff i think is the best way to describe it i think and this is something that like buffs the entire group and uh i don't really know how to other way to describe it like four of the eight sorter advanced classes have them i'm sure other games have them too but holding down shift and control these usually have very long cooldowns i'm not pressing this often at all but um when you want to cast it usually those things are timed very precisely and so you want to have it easily bound to something all right, going over one more key. This is the first PVE ability. Usually I talk about PVP abilities just because I PVP. This is the first PVE ability that I will bind. Um, this is something called my Rocket Boost. And for those of you who don't play Sworder, Rocket Boost is a bot ability, but it's basically like a mount that has a cooldown. And you can only use this like extra speed increase mount for... I don't know, 10 seconds, and then it goes on cooldown. But for PvE, it's very important when moving indoors when you're not allowed to have regular mounts. And so I got tired of pressing it. Again, you want a keybind, and so I just put it here. If you don't have this ability or you want to bind that to something else and have 
less complications elsewhere, go for it. But for me, it's worth the time to put my rocket boost there. Um, this key, it's right below the space bar. So you're, these are the two keys that you'll actually be hitting with your pinky. Um, so this one I use as my PvP specific abilities. For example, throw the hot ball, but also in Odessa, if you have like um, if you have uh, different abilities that allow um, that are very specific to that PvP game, like um, pass the objective or pass the ball for the other MMOs. But basically, um, I really only use that for very specific PvP situations. But again, when you want to use it, you want to use it quickly. Just drop your pinky from the space bar, um, and then you can use it. Um, this key right here is actually one of the hardest ones to hit. And I actually don't hit that with the, like, end of my finger. Like, all of these other abilities I'm hitting with, like, the pad of my finger. I'm actually, when I'm holding my um, fingers here, you can, if you have um, big fingers, reach your uh, end of your finger, of your middle finger down and hit that. But what I do is I actually almost um, lift up my middle finger, ironically, and my second knuckle on my finger hits that perfectly. And right here, again, it's not the most easiest thing to do. It gets a lot easier with practice. But because it's not the easiest thing to do, I bound that to be my weird AoE ability. And that's the only way I know how to describe it. But trust me, there's a very there's a lot of classes that have a weird AoE ability. It might be your stealth scan for um, mercenaries or commandos. It might be that diversion that you use as snipers to pull people out of cover and reduce their accuracy. A lot of classes have some weird class-specific AoE ability that you don't really use that often, but when you want it, again, you can hit it pretty quickly by just um, lifting your finger up and hitting it with your knuckle. Um, the last key on the G13 team that's in the main um, part is where I did my mount. Same reasons as the rocket boost. I'm not going to spend too much time on it. And PvP, PvE, it's good to have. We already talked about this being my movement, and so the next thing we can talk about is the two dots. And this is the only... Um, and the actual the mouse wheel, you can press the thumb pad down. So you basically have three keys right here, as well as the regular joystick. And so the first one is what I call the up dot right here. And the up dot is set to auto walk. And this is more important than you think. Basically, the only time I use auto walk is when I am either very bored going from one end of the world to another and want to leave and get a drink of water or something ridiculous, or in a fight, when I'm going from objective to objective, what I'll do is if I see attackers on a, an objective that we control, I'll hit the auto walk button and I'll be walking toward that objective. I'll take both hands off the G13 and the mouse and I'll move them toward my keyboard. The only really time I, so far we've used the actual keyboard type the message saying, oh, there's two enemies coming toward objective A or something like that. And then as soon as I touch my thumb back on the G13 and start moving again, I can regain control over my movement. And this is super effective because most of the reason I hear people not communicating in chat if they don't have mics available, the most and if you're just going with a random group and you don't have coordination, the biggest reason I hear people say they don't communicate is that it just takes away from the fighting. And this is not true if you communicate between nodes by holding out auto walk so you can walk and talk at the same time with basically no bad side effects. The second one is what I call the down dot, and this is called the focus target. I'm pretty sure all MMOs have some sort of focus target ability where you can not only have yourself and your target, but some sort of target that you're watching in, no, in another like panel of some kind on your AI and um, this is just a uh, I to be honest I don't really use focus target too much it's very helpful if in DPS classes if you're trying to shut down a healer and you're damaging one healer stunning the other healer um, to be honest though I don't really use it too much if you wanted you can do one set to focus target hold down shift hit this and that can be like acquire focus targets target or something like that but um, again, there's, this is what, if I had to use focus target, this is what I would use. Your thumb press down, I've really not come up with what I want. And if you guys want to comment below what you think I should bind here, I'm open to suggestions. But this is actually right now, and I'm not super happy about it, is my in-combat res. And for a lot of people who don't know, in PvP and Sworder, you can actually, um, if you're a mercenary or like a sage or sork or something like that, you can actually, or scoundrel, you can um, res people in the um, middle of the battle while you're in combat. And it's like a channeled ability, and it kind of puts them in a vulnerable situation. But I wanted something to 
that would not be too bad if I pressed it accidentally. When you're moving with the thumb pad, I'll like occasionally, very occasionally press down on it. And I didn't want it to be like some long cooldown shield that um, if I pressed it in the wrong time, that would be really bad. And it's just something that is very uncommon, but when I do need to press it, I can press it. All right, we basically basically went through the entire G13, the entire mouse button, and so now we go to the very, very limited use I actually use the regular keypad pad for. Again, as we showed in the graphic, I have the G13 on the far left, the keyboard in the middle, and the mouse on the right. Um, unlike most people who, set, who keybind 1 to 9 as being specific abilities, I actually use 1 to 9 as target markers. And although I haven't really showed this in too many videos I've posted yet, um, when I'm going, like in World of Warcraft or in Star Wars The Old Republic, if you want to mark a healer, you, and if you're doing uh, raiding and you want to specify what order of targets you're going to put, you have to, um, you have, uh, different uh, little icons or symbols you can put above their heads to mark them. And most people in PvP don't mark the healer in Star Wars Hill Republic because it takes time. You have to right-click on their little panel, go through a couple options. It's a bit not easy at all. But what most people don't know is you can actually bind the target marker abilities to be keybound. And so I bound this basically on these number keys right here. I just take my hand off the mouse for a second, hit one of these numbers, they have an icon above their head really quickly, and I continue on fighting. It's very, very efficient. And But as you can tell, because I have to take my hand off the mouse, none of these are very important for the fight because having your hand off the mouse is honestly very limiting. And none of this is super, super important, but very helpful. Again, like the little delete key right here, drawing stone weapon. Again, you want to have it bound because if you're trying to make it a cool-looking thumbnail or look cool, you want to have it, but really you almost never use it as we talked about um instead my targeting is on my scroll wheel so we need some way to zoom in and out i use these keys to zoom in and out for me uh again i'm usually not zooming in in and out uh in the middle of a fight sometimes if i get my camera stuck behind like a a wall or something it might zoom in and i need to zoom out quickly but i've never had this be a problem if i had a mouse with maybe like two more side buttons maybe i would bind like zooming in and out to be on those two uh, side buttons, but again, make your own decisions. All right, so to kind of tie it all together, I'm gonna use an old clip that I made a little bit ago that's really specific to one character, but in this I have my layout, and I took the time to do little dots over each of the keys as I pressed them, and Ridge, actually when I would be um, playing this for real, I would really only be using the blue and the green, the G13 and my mouse, but I included the red dots just for those of you who um, may not want to buy a G13, but still kind of want to get used to my way of keybinding. So here we go. Notice my mouse never clicks on anything throughout the whole video. And just see how you like it, and hopefully it'll be good. Try to use all of my keybinds.
so basically guys that's that's how i keep mine it may look very confusing confusing and that's because i try to explain it a lot of different ways have really visual um charts of all of the different ways i key bind get really specific and i really hope this helped you aside from it being what i think is a revolutionary way to key bind it's not that crazy the only really crazy things are the targeting is not on tab it's on the scroll wheel which i think some people already do the modifier position is transferred so that it's like playing a trumpet. You have the three keys right next to each other, and instead of your fingers on your left hand being central around moving, you can move with your thumb and have the sh modifier keys be very available uh, for your other fingers. And then the target marker position, which most people I don't think know about in some games, how you can keybind that, and it's basically on the numbers instead of most people binding the numbers to do different attacks. But other than that, guys, I basically just did all of my attacks with the side buttons. I did interrupts and stuns with the mouse wheel pressed down. I did defensives with a little bit of targeting on the mouse wheel scrolling. And all the other just kind of random abilities, I just clustered around on the G13 like you would any other key binding, where you're just binding moves that you use a lot closer in and moves that you don't use farther out. But basically, I hope this helped. Even if you don't want to buy the G13, it might be a little expensive for most people. At least try to use combination keys. At least try to um, not backpedal, use mouse turning, um, all the different things we talked about. Um, you don't have to buy a lot of different equipment. The G13's not super expensive. You can get a cheap mouse with two side buttons very, very easily. And um, if you money's not a problem and you're a little daunted by all the combination keys, what you can do is you can get a mouse, a gaming MMO mouse that has like 12 side buttons and then just never use like more than one combination key. All right, so say I convinced you. Say you see my stealth key binding and you have no more questions. You feel like you really understand it, but you're a little daunted by the fact of key binding because let's be honest, moving with a thumb pad may seem a little bit crazy at first. Um, all these... Uh, key bindings might seem hard and so this is the steps that I would do for the movement first you just want to move around someplace safe like your home and your ship just so you can kind of get used to not running into walls which is harder than it sounds next I would go to platform jumping if you can find like a town or maybe inside your ship where you can just practice making jumps on things jumping off timing your jumps so that you land on the edge just to kind of get used to again the keys Next step is a little bit tricky and may, might be very frustrating for you, but I think it's one of the best things that helped me. Easter egg versus and datacron finding. So datacrons in Star Wars The Old Republic are these really hidden objects that are out of the way, and you have to kind of know and be looking for them before you find them. And often they're found in very complex sequences of jumping and moving and very precise mo motions. Like for those of you who know the Makeb datacron, that is a pain in the butt, and it took me about four hours to get. Doing that with a G13 probably strengthened my uh, understanding and ability with the movement more than anything else that I've done. And then once you, you can do that, and you can even skip any of these steps, but then going into PvP, it's super easy. Practicing rotation-wise, obviously, the best first step would be obviously to get a training dummy or go on the, um, some area where you can just whack at a target for a couple minutes just to kind of get used to it. The other thing that I would... Um, recommend doing is for those who play Star Wars Old Republic um, or other games where you have kind of like big bosses with a lot of help, health and the Sword of 3.0 3 patch they had bosses in the storyline that um, they gave you a robot to heal you up but you had to focus on doing damage to them and if you just go through your rotation one it'll help you practice go th through an actual rotation and if you need help I did a lot of videos on that but um, the second thing it'll do is just get you used to um, clicking all the different abilities and you'll start to get used to doing getting really good at the abilities in your main rotation and that's really what's important the ones that are you don't really use too often well i set them kind of hard to use because you don't really use them that often and so you'll kind of see and hopefully get an understanding of really the your day-to-day battle-to-battle moves that you're constantly using, you should not be even barely moving your fingers from the keyboard, and I think that's something my style has on any other style I've ever seen. So um, hopefully you guys learned a lot. Um, as always, comments about questions about what the heck I'm doing, if you still don't understand, uh, suggestions about how to improve it, or if you just want to give me feedback, I um, accept it all. 
and um, I will hopefully see you guys for future videos. Um, as always, thanks for watching, and now more than always, please feel free to like, subscribe, and share this with your friends, because I feel, feel like um, this is something that could help a lot of people get better, not just at Star Wars The Old Republic, but at a lot of different games. So I'll see you next time.